In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create this effect in Blender completely from scratch. Whether you're a beginner or more experienced, I'll guide you through each step so you can follow along. And with that said, let's get straight into Blender. Now that we're in this scene, first thing to do is to import these objects. And if you're lazy like me, you can go to my Patreon where you can grab the project file and therefore follow along more easily. Now that you have laptop in your scene, you first want to delete these faces and replace it with the plane. Now you want to adjust the position so it fits the monitor. And the reason why I did this is because I'll be creating fractures from this plane. So what you want to do now is to subdivide the plane many times and use the self fracture add-on. You can keep the default setting and press OK. Now that you have your fractures, you want to press M and add it to your collection. Name it whatever you want. I will now hide everything except the can and the fractures because now we will be simulating the glass shattering effect and to do that you need to keyframe the location of the can so something like this should work also something that you should keep in mind the slower the animation the better collision simulation will be you can always speed it up later but make sure the original animation is slow now we want to select the fractures go to object rigid body and add active as i play the animation you can see it kind of explodes and the way I fix this usually is to go to edit mode and extrude it so it has some depth. Now you can see it works but it falls down so you need to turn off the gravity. You can do that in your scene section and clicking off this gravity button. Now you can see it works but the can needs rigid body as well. All you have to do for the can is to click rigid body, change the type to passive and click animated. And as you can see the collisions are working now. Now that you're happy with your animation all you need to do is let the timeline play to its end. Now select all of these objects, go to File, Export and Alembic. Make sure you set Selection only. Now you can delete the original simulation and replace it with your Alembic file. As you can see, this is the Alembic file and it looks exactly the same. The reason why we replaced the simulation with Alembic is because the PC wouldn't handle it and also we can mix many variations of these fractures. Now we can hide the Alembic file and unhide the plane and let's create more variations. Now I'll create more variations, so again self fracture and change the parameters but don't make it way too high otherwise you will run into some issues. So I would say max like 180. Let's move it into new collection, hide the plane and as you can see it ran into some issues and made these kind of lines. So now we have to redo this again but now with less fractures. So again self fracture, 129, move it into new collection, this would be fine, now I'll just make them smaller. Go to edit mode, extrude them, apply scale, object, rigid body, add active. It might look something like this, but don't worry, this is normal. And the reason behind this is because if you see this yellow line, it hasn't been fully loaded. So the simulation hasn't been loaded, so you can see it. And the fix to this is just to play the animation over and over again. Here you can see I'm letting the animation play and bring the timeline back so it loads. When the yellow line is fully loaded, the animation will look something like this. Now again, let it play until the end of the timeline. Select these fractures, go to File, Export, Alembic, Selection only, and Export. Now delete them and replace them. Here you can see these two animations together. You can add many variations, but I think for the purpose of this video, this is just fine. This is how it looks all together, but now we have to keyframe the visibility of these fractures and the fake monitor. So let's select the original plane, go to the moment when the can hits the monitor. So for me, 55. First, I'll add a keyframe for render visibility of the monitor. Then I'll move next frame and disable the render and keyframe it again. Now the monitor will be visible until 55 and from 56, it won't. So now what I want to do is keyframe the visibility of these fractures as well. So basically these fractures won't be visible until the frame 56. And from the frame 56 and so on, they will. However, we got around 400 of these fractures and to animate them one by one, it wouldn't be very efficient. But fortunately, there's a way to do this. So to animate the visibility of these fractures, what you can do is click on any of these fractures, keyframe the visibility. So on the 55th frame, they are not visible. On the 56th, they are. Now right click on the collection where the fractures are and select every single object and make sure the last one is the animated plane. Now what you can do is Press Ctrl L and link animation data. Now all of these fractures will not be visible until the frame 56 and from the frame 56 and so on they will. 
Now you can do the same thing for the second collection. Select all of the objects, go to the first collection, select the animated plane, hit Ctrl L and link animation data. As you can see now all of the fractures have animated visibility. Also what you want to do is to move this monitor a little bit back, create a second one, and on the second one delete the faces where the can went through. The second one should be visible at all times. Also another little detail that I like to use is to go to edit mode of this hole that we have in this in this monitor, set up proportional editing and just move these vertices a bit so it's a little bit more random. Also since we're using so much glass in this scene, it's very important that you light up this scene correctly. Meaning you should set up environment light so you have nice reflections from the glass and just carefully place the light so it looks nice. If you want to get it as close as possible to mine, you can visit my Patreon where I have the project file. And also for this video, this is pretty much it. I hope you got some value out of this one and you will be able to create some awesome artworks from this tutorial. If you do, mention me on Instagram. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.